Hello, I'm here with Zin for a Star Citizen podcast. It is the 26th of May. We are day six of Fleet Week, I think, today? Will be. Yeah. It's it's Crusader Day still. Crusader and, and some other manufacturers like Tumbrel, because, you know, the Nova Tank. Um, and I wanted to talk about some of the stuff that's happened in the world of Star Citizen over the last few weeks. Uh, get um, Zin's hot takes and some things. And just discuss some stuff. So I'm joined here by Zin, uh, who is the editor for the channel. Say hello, Zin. Hello, Zin. She, oh, she's a tricksy one. And I wanted to get your views currently on Fleet Week. What, what, what have you, what have you liked during this year's uh, 2021 Fleet Week? What, what's, what's, how's it been going? What, what have you seen? Um, I've seen things and stuff. I so my favourite thing so far has to be the carpet in front of the hologram the carpet was a whole other talking point which i hadn't add, added to the uh, <laughs> subjects we'd be talking about so when we were on stream um having a look around the expo hall one of our um viewers said look at the carpet by the big man which is the big hologram um and we went over there we had a look at the carpet it's the most textured carpet known to man i'm i'm surprised that they've put that much effort into the carpet like just wow that's that's money well spent right there. It it's so tessellized. It's 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 like a giant mountain range of more mountains. And I looked there and I thought I saw God. Anything else other than the big carpet? Joking aside, I mean the carpet is pretty interesting, but it's not that interesting. Jesus, it's just a carpet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think probably the Bengal being able to see the Bengal. Like, I mean, I fucking called it. I said I called it. Um, we did a stream on the thirtieth of April. And I was like, oh, because you were reading the, the spiel on the web page and they mentioned a carrier. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's going to be the Bengal. Is it going to be the Bengal? And it was the Bengal. It had to be the Bengal, didn't it? I mean, it could have been a different carrier, but it, well, it couldn't have been. It had to be 100% be the Bengal because it was the Bengal. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it is, it, okay, it's massive. However, I have some issues with the Bengal and I feel like it hasn't got the same polish treatment as some of the other ships in Star Citizen, like the Javelin, like the, the Idris, um, and like all of the newer ships. And it is because it is, uh, it looks to me anyway, it's an older asset that needs a bit of polish. Um, and, you, and maybe even a fresh lick of paint. I think it looks okay. I think it it looks like... Because that's the thing, it's, like it, it's an old ship. Like It's yeah. been around for a while, so that, it's going to have a little bit of agingness to it like just style wise not necessarily like it's beaten up and stuff like that i mean like literally the design of it would be different compared to newer ships yeah that's true i mean I don't, and that's the true of all ships i suppose each ship's sort of individual some of them might take retro stylings some of the manufacturers might have um a, a 1980s kind of feel where some are more going to be world war ii-esque and and then some are going to be more modern um because obviously artists need to, you know, take inspiration from things. I mean, the the RSI Scorpius, for example. I think we we can see inspiration from an X Wing. Actually, that that's that's a good segue. I think RSI Scorpius is in that mm -hmm. new heavy fighter. What do you think? Do you think it's a, a a cool ship, a good ship? I think it looks cool. I mean, I'm not. You know me. I don't. I'm not a massive Star Wars fan. Like, take it or leave it. Not really bothered. So I, I I can look at it and go, yeah, that looks kind of like an X-Wing. But... I, I, I don't want to leave you in the lurch with the criticism you'll get for, you don't like Star Wars. I don't give a fuck. I'm also, I'm also not a Star Wars fan. I'll watch Star Wars. I haven't seen any of the new ones. S Star Trek. Love, love my Star Trek. Oh, maybe yeah, not. I love Star Trek. Maybe not Discovery. Maybe not the new stuff. And I like sci-fi. I love my, love my sci-fi. Just not a huge Star Wars fan. But yeah, I, 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 I like the ship. I think they've done good at... Making something that looks a little bit different for RSI, but still looks like an RSI ship. Especially when its wings are folded back, because mm. it looks like a little bit of like a Gladius. It looks a little bit like an X-Wing. It looks a little bit like a Star Fury from Babylon 5. You haven't watched Babylon 5, have you? That, no. That's going to be lost on you. But once it folds its wings back, it looks like an Aurora and I can see, ah, RSI. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was surprised how good it looked. It's a shame that it's not a single-seater heavy fighter, but... That would probably just make it OP. Yeah. You've got to balance this stuff. I, I think, yeah, I think some of the... Well, I mean, once you get... Uh, what is it? AI Blades? They, so they've basically said with AI Blades, some ships that have AI Blades will be able to um, have semi-automated turrets with them or 
have them so that they're slaved so the gunner can fire them forwards. We don't know if that's true of the RSO Scorpius, but it might be. And yeah. if it is, well, that's a very, very powerful combo. Um, what about the $200 price tag, Zin? Um, I mean, I think most Star Citizen ships are overpriced. Yeah. What What about that um, lovely Aegis pack that we saw the other day? Yeah, that? that's that was ridiculous. Ten ten thousand dollars for some Aegis yeah. ships. Um, but but two hundred dollars for that Scorpius is like it's not bad compared to the other ships. By Star Citizen standards for monetization, yeah. it is it is reasonably priced. But seeing you can you'll be able to get it in game eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll probably be able to get it in game in three point eight, so the Q two twenty twenty two patch most likely because it will be released in three point seventeen is the plan, which will be the Q one patch, and then likely it will then be available to purchase in game the quarter afterwards. That's sort of what we're expecting from CIG at the moment. What about the Hercules and the Nova Tank? Obviously we got to see them in the expo hall. They're still available mm-hmm. in the expo hall at time of recording. What do you think of those big boys? Well the the Hercules is it's a big ship. It's a really big ship. It is a really big ship. I mean we did we did a tour of it before when it mm-hmm. was in the PTU. Uh, that's true. That's pretty good. I like it. I like the way that it looks. I like the style. I mean, I like most Crusader ships, to be fair. Like, I think they're all quite pretty. I think if there was a company that I was going to like, fanboy or something, it would be them. See, I love, I think, on paper, I like Drake the most because there are no frills. Yeah, uh, I suppose. And I like Nino, Nino, um, ambulances and police cars. I think they're just hilarious, the colours. That's great, yeah. Um, but I think it's either Crusader or Aegis. That's probably my favourite ship manufacturer. I just, I love pottering around. So I do like pottering around in the um, Cutlass Red, but I, I just love pottering around in the uh, Mercury Star Runner. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. It's, that um, is my favourite ship by some margin, so. And then the, you've got the Hercules, which is also a very nice looking ship, albeit much bigger, not really for pottering around. <laughs> um, but then but then you've also got the Ares inferno and ion which are again some pretty good looking ships yeah so i i I have a load of love for the ion but yeah and you have like you're you're an inferno person aren't you because i like my ballistics yeah so you like that the 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 big rapid firing and i just i love the quite big differences between the in the same hull effectively so yeah i'm really looking forward to those ships and we might see them pretty soon the aries so uh, we talked the other day about super expensive ships in Star Citizen. And we sort of mentioned it here that some of the ships aren't worth their price. But mm-hmm. if you want to support the game, if you've got the spare income, we're not going to tell you what to spend your money on. But uh, yeah, we, we saw the, what was it, $8,000 and like $9,000 um, packages for Aegis um, ships. Yeah. And it was just the Aegis ships. And plus VAT is over $10,000. And it was just sort of like, oh, so expensive. And I know a load of people that bought it. And we were talking to one of our uh, one of our mates, Sarge, one of, at least one of my mates, soon to be Zin's mate. Um, <laughs> uh, he spent over one hundred and five thousand dollars on the game um, so far, and it's sort of like, but they can sort of like, if you've got the um, spare income, um, literally a spare income to afford it. Some people are, have got huge amounts of liquidity, uh, and they're very lucky because of that. But um, yeah, I I really feel like Sarge has fuck you money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and is probably a def- one of the definitions of a whale. We were talking about whales the other day and what constitutes a whale. Is it someone that mm. spent um, like $1,000 on the game? And we went, actually, probably, they probably are a whale um, because they, they've got, they've bought the game basically 20 times over at that point. Um, and as soon as you get to that territory, you're a whale. But there's there's such a big disparity between someone that spent $1,000 and someone that spent over 100000 I think it comes from you wouldn't really spend that much money in any other game, even a game with microtransactions. But some some people do, don't they? Yeah, but the amount of money you spend in Star Citizen, like, you're getting to those higher numbers a lot easier. Yeah, I suppose so, because there, there are those giant packs available and some people just yeah. want to collect them. And I think that because Star Citizen attracts a older crowd, that are, are typically a large percentage of those are going to be um, probably quite successful IT professionals, at least a larger percentage than, say, will play FIFA. Um, I think there's a lot more, a lot more money um, that's sort of like spare. It's disposable income. People have a huge amount more for Star Citizen, and I'm not talking about those people that obviously have 
put 100,000 in, but I'm talking about people that would put 500 in and go, yeah, that $500 is fine. That's a huge amount of money for a game still. That's huge. But mm-hmm. there's a huge portion of the Star Citizen community that does that. Um, especially seeing that you can get everything in game. It's not like those FIFA games where you can only get that stuff by paying to win. In Star Citizen, it's very much, well, you can pay to support the game, but you can buy it in game. Anyway, Nine Tails Lockdown. Mm. So w- we heard things like, if you're in the expo hall, you can occasionally hear Empire and some sort of like breaking transmission stuff, can't you? Yes, yeah, so that's only been in the PTU that I've noticed so far. Okay. Um, I heard it uh, in the uh, metro, uh, metro loop area, not actually in the main hall. But yeah, so it's only happened in the PTU. I, I haven't had a proper, proper check in the live, but I don't think it's there yet. Okay. I think it's going to happen in a little bit. I also had another theory about the whole yeah, yeah. Nine Tails lockdown. If it happens before Fleet Week is over, which I would really like to see, I think they're going to hijack that hologram. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool. Because that's, that's something new. Like, we haven't had a hologram like that before, have we? No. That big. We've Obviously, we've had the, the new Babbage hologram. Yeah, but no, nothing that big that looks like it could actually be quite modular. I see what you mean. No, no, I like, I like that theory. It's possible that we'll get a little teaser for Nine Tails Lockdown. Mm. I don't think they're ready for Nine Tails Lockdown until 3.14, personally. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's my, my theory on it at the moment. Um, obviously, we've heard some rumours about them wanting to get Nine Tails Lockdown done at the same time as Fleet Week originally, and uh, then uh, might have been pushed back, or they might have gone, well, actually, maybe it's a better place to put it straight afterwards. But I, I think there are some um, some tweaks and stuff that CIG will want to put in before that event. It's possible it could be straight after Fleet Week, little teaser, then straight afterwards. It's possible it will be in 3.14, but that's the sort of time frame we're thinking within the next couple of months. Uh, depending on how they want to do it, maybe it'll be like an announcement, kind of like Xeno Threat, and then a month later. Well, so that that's an interesting thing as well. Yeah, so obviously we had Xeno Threat. Um, quite fun event. Um, they handled some stuff wrong in it. They the second part of Xeno Threat, or the, the second major combat part of Xeno Threat, uh, was only on for a, literally a, like a couple of days before gone. And that section of the this thing um, was sort of very brief in itself as well. So it was only like what twenty minutes of gameplay, then it was done. And they sort of announced stuff with Xeno Threat, like it's coming, it's here, do this. And, and this is on the website, so it, it sort of broke immersion quite heavily. Mm. And it was like, and now do some combat. I was like, okay, that's just a bit weird, the way they did that. They need to do the announcements in a different way. As long as CIG have learnt lessons, I think the Nine Tails lockdown could be pretty good. Um, and we're thinking that's sort of like going to be um, literally um, pirates sort of locking down space stations and areas of space and some missions associated with that. And you're going to have to go and deal with those uh, pirates at those space stations to be able to use them again. I was going to say, as a bit of a segue into our next topic... Oh. What I was going to say is it would be handy. So uh, just thinking about it. So with Xeno Threat, we said that the, 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 the uh, fighting section of it was too short. I think the problem they had with that is that it was happening too often. Yeah, I mean, and you could literally just hop onto a new server and the event would be there. Now, if they had some way of making it happen naturally, like without having to trigger the event manually... But it would be great if if they could have had some way to like make the server go right. I'm ready to trigger this mission now. Yeah, and not have it happen too often. If only they had something like that, like some form of quanta. <laughs> yeah. So Tony Zorovic recently uh, did his video, uh, which was what odd in the fact that CIG said we're going to have a big quantum update. Um, talking about the dynamic universe sim and sort of like dynamic missions and stuff. And it's going to be in May. And they actually did it in May. Um, <laughs> that, was, that was exciting. So it's a, it was a really, really, really uh, anticipated video. Um, basically, Tony Zurich updating us on all this like new dynamic mission tech and, uh, and all that sort of stuff. And um, they talked about a couple of things that are kind of come in the, the, the pipeline next. Uh, and it was the uh, Nine Tails lockdown, which we know is probably going to be the next thing. And then also Infiltrator was the other thing um, that they had on their uh, sort of like not too distant future timeline, which we don't actually know what it is yet, really. Um, some rumours and stuff flying around at the moment, but nothing that I really know what's going on. So yeah, Nine Tails Lockdown, if they can have um, stuff that triggers that event over periods of time based on player actions and missions that are being done rather mm-hmm. than forcibly manually trigger it, 
that would be cool. And we could have Nine Tails Lockdown come and go through months, potentially. Yeah. Um, and it might not just be a, oh, it's a Xeno threat. It's a one week thing. Oh, then it's gone. It might be well, actually, this is something that's going to be happening for a, a long time. And yeah, we might um, get a, like a full playthrough of it when it first comes out and then it might come and go. But something that just goes, well, I know that this event is coming soon because we're doing missions towards it yeah. rather than, oh, no, I've missed it because I was away for a day. It's, it's, I, I much prefer that sort of automatic triggering, that, that dynamic events based on what's going on in the game, how many um, ships have been killed. The thing is, I, I, I feel that it shouldn't be done in a way that they're like, we're trying to get everybody to have a go. Like I can I can understand they they might wanted to have done that with the Xeno threat because it was the first of its kind and they wanted lots of people to test it and so yeah, on and so yeah. forth. But I feel like it should be a thing of if you're out for a couple of days, you might miss it, but it'll come back. You'll have another chance at some point. Yeah. So please, CIG, please make this event more inclusive in the fact that I want to be able to play it uh, with sort of like our org because we were starting to do events we had literally gone bam let's do a xeno threat event for mm. board gamer org we had started to do that we we're like ah we're going to organize every two weeks we're going to blah 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 actually we'll just do it straight away for the, the next xeno threat event and we'll do it the next day oh it's xeno threat's ended so oh oh um and uh, yeah it just those events are actually good gameplay and fun and even replayability for them is quite fun because there's so much going on and you can jump into them so quickly what do you think of, more generally, the current Star Citizen patch? Like, for stability, for performance? Seems all right. Yeah, I mean, we had some problems previously with 3.13. Mm. Um, after its deployment, actually, oddly. Like, straight straight away, it was fine for a little bit. At least for, for me it was. It might have been a coincidence. Uh, and then the next day, it was um, very unstable, um, which was odd. But uh, 3.13.1 seems pretty stable to me. And performance is relatively good for Star Citizen. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of issues with just um, new Babbage due to events and stuff. Yep. I mean, it's there's a lot going on there as well. Fire, fireworks. But everything else seemed seemed pretty good to me, to be fair. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with 3.13.1 at the moment. I mean, obviously, there's a load of um, stuff that they're going to want to get solved. Um, there's a huge amount more to do for Star Citizen. But when they're able to run relatively, relatively successful events... Um, like this, and I'm talking about success when the fact that a lot of people have been able to try the free fly, and um, it's been good um, financially for CIG, and they've made um, quite a quite a large amount of money. Any cool ships that, if you had the money, you would have wanted to pick up in, or ships that you want to pick up in game that you've seen during Fleet Week? Uh, no, but to be fair, um, obviously the Fleet Week does focus more on military type ships. Yeah. So fighty fighty pew pew ships. Obviously, I like the Ares Inferno. Yep. But you're going to buy me one of them, so that's fine. I am. That is true. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't think there was anything that would suit me personally. I love the fact that we had a javelin tour, seeing that I own a javelin. I think that was pretty cool. And I'm much more of an economy player, realistically, than I am a, a combat player. And so I'm looking forward to anything that allows me to build a bit of a business empire. Bally Merchantman in the future, that would be, that'd be pretty cool. But I, I mean, the combat ship wise, Perseus, oh, a lot of love for the Perseus. So another thing, uh, probably the last thing I want to talk about really is 3.14. It has been a bit gutted. Um, and they do this, uh, they did it with 3.13 and they've done it a bit with 3.14. I mean, it's not everything out of it. Um, there's still some, some relative goodness in there, but I think that they've moved the medical gameplay back, which a lot of people mm. sort of like, um, upset about. I think that's reasonably uh, reasonable to be upset about. They have added capacitor gameplay, though, which might massively change combat, along with that missile operator mode, which has you um, having to choose, am I shooting my conventional weapons, or am I going into missile operator mode and using a missile? At the moment, 3.14 is not too, um, uh, not much of a patch. It's it's pretty it's pretty light. It's pretty bare bones. Um, I think that the big th biggest things there being Crusader and Orison. But uh, what do you think about patches like this? What do you think like about the delays happening? Pretty sort of like a little bit into when we're expecting it actually to be a bit more locked in. I think, well, like I said, I'd rather they do things properly and not rush things or try and like send out buggy rubbish. 
Would you say that CIG rush things? No. Would you say that they send out buggy pieces of stuff still, though? Yes. Not mutually exclusive is my point there, Zin. Um, but it, at the end of the day, none of that stuff was ever locked in, was it? It was always tentative. Yeah, so it's, it was 70% probability. But obviously that means that, well, 70% probability and also changing priorities. So that medical gameplay was pushed basically to 3.15 and salvage for the wisdom 3.15 was pushed to 3.16. I mean, would you prefer they push back the release of the patch or try and give you what they can and just push back the modules? I'd rather than push back the modules, admittedly. Yeah. Uh, but, but what I prefer, um, and I obviously we haven't got, is I prefer medical gameplay to be in 3.14. <laughs> um and salvage to be in 3.15. But yes, I, it's, that's more of me as a spoiled child and just like, but I want it. You keep on pushing salvage back. You keep on pushing gameplay back. Um, I, I just, I desperately want more gameplay loops because we've got very limited gameplay loops in the, the, with cargo, combat, uh, some missions associated with some stuff um, and mining. And that's the sort of core gameplay. We, we want medical gameplay. We want salvage. We want repair. We want refueling. Um, we want... A billion other things from exploration to science to base building to uh, all this sort of stuff. And Star Citizen just gets hugely more gameplay for each of these like um, gameplay loops they start adding. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly excited to see Horizon and Crusader. It's just yeah, a bit of a shame that uh, I think it's that, the Taurus and scanning, scanning updates that I'm looking forward to the most mm. in that patch now. It'd be interesting to see what capacitors do for combat because they basically said, this is a huge change. Your lasers are going to need uh, to charge every so often with the capacitors running out and then you're not going to be able to just burst fire constantly. It's going to run your capacitors dry uh, and you're going to have like a little bit of extra um, capacitor charge to quickly put into shields briefly um, and things like that. So I suppose you're you're pretty chill, surprisingly chill uh, with the sort of delays and pushbacks of certain uh, features and modules. Um, I would say that maybe that's because you haven't been covering the game uh, as long as I have. I wouldn't say it's because I'm I haven't been covering the game. I'd say it's because I'm not I I'm not a massive like star. If like I said, if I wasn't doing this job, I probably wouldn't be playing Star Citizen. At least not yet. Maybe probably not even when it got released. <laughs> what? It's all right. She doesn't mean that. She she loves the game. She's so I'm oh, very love, much of a. I love star Citizen. I'm, I'm more interested in just having stuff to play with yeah yeah so i'm happy just being given stuff to play with and i'm not there's nothing i'm really looking forward to per se you know we're going to change that sin we're going to make you a fully fledged individual star citizen and i'm going to fire you that's that's not true (laughs) that's not true that's not going to happen um you're the you're you're, you're the best damn editor we've ever employed here yeah board gamer but you've only had to compete with me so uh not a not a high bar uh, actually, out of curiosity, are there any gameplay features or, or general features that you know that are coming in the next year or so that you are looking forward to? Not really, no. What? No. What is this? I, I'll, like I said, I'll enjoy doing things. Like, I quite enjoyed doing the mining stuff. Like, I'd never bothered really mining before until you made me do that video. It was enjoyable. I'm just going to make you do this stuff now. I'm going to go, Zin. Yeah. I'm going to make you do this. I'm going to make you grind up to get, what, an 890 jump. Like, how long will that take you? Two months. See you later, me. <laughs> See you later. Month and a half in, you get everything wiped. Get all your assets wiped. Wouldn't yeah. that be fun? I'm very much a spectator of this game. Okay. No, that's, I think that's reasonable. It's okay. I'm going to force you to play it and force you to enjoy it. Uh, but yeah, I think on that bombshell, uh, we'll call it there. But um, if you've got anything that you'd like me and Zin to specifically uh, talk about or hone in on um, in the future, um, then please suggest them down below. Actually, that's that's a good point. Did you see the TechLinked video? I haven't watched it. Oh, okay. So we will discuss that TechLinked video after you've watched it next time. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the sounds I like to make women make. The sound of disgust and... Disappointment. Yeah, damn right. It's the only sound I know. Um, but thanks very much for joining me today, Zin. Very much appreciated. <laughs> it's literally my job. <laughs> it is literally your job. But you know, we have fun. Tomorrow we'll be streaming um, from the Expo Hall as it changes over to Anvil, question mark? I've got the window for one sec. Um, 
yeah, I think it's Anvil Expo tomorrow, so we'll be streaming live there, get some more videos out on that. Um, we'll be covering the Redeemer as a ship buys guide pretty soon, um, and a huge amount more Star Citizen coverage as we hear the news. You'll get summaries of it. Um, just confirm that I'm correct in. I think you're correct. Yeah, perfect. That's close enough. But anyway, thanks very much for joining us today. Uh, very much appreciated. You take care. Tell us what you think in the comments below. Feedback, whatever. Um, say goodbye, Zin. Goodbye, Zin. Thanks for watching, guys. Love you. Bye. Oh, what's this? I just found all your search history online. You filthy boy buying spaceships and going on ship hub. Zin, show a picture of a, like a sexy ship or something. You should have used NordVPN. It's a VPN, obviously, and it has my seal of approval because I chill for them. Use the links below to get a discount and help protect your data, identity, privacy, and to help with online accessibility. I'm shilling for spaceships today. Do you like building spaceships? Of course you do. JR Fabrication make officially licensed Star Citizen products and Airfix-like model kits. Do you want an arrow fighter? Maybe a freelancer? Some cyclone little buggies? Dragonflies? Oh my! You can buy them and build them, or just add them to your pile of shame. You want dioramas of ships and vehicles? They've got them too, and they continue to add more to their range. Follow the link down below to jrfabrication.co.uk forward slash board to see all of the wonderful products they have on offer and use the code board invictus to also get some exclusive Fleet Week recruitment propaganda. A3 art prints with each of your orders. Ooh. Every month we have a ship giveaway for May. It's for a Crusader Hercules Starlifter. It's a big boy cargo and ground vehicle transport ship that you can expect to be added to the game by the end of the month. Just comment on any of my videos made during the month to be in for a chance of winning that. Thank you so much to my channel members who have pressed the join button below my videos and my Patreons as well. Going the extra mile really, really helps the channel. Say thanks for helping the channels in. Thanks for helping the channels in. Consider becoming a channel member or Patreon as well, and maybe you'll get some poorly photoshopped naughty spaceship shots. Oh, saucy. Thanks for watching and all your support.